Hi everybody, this is Pulkit Chabda. In this video, we will be discussing the next question of the Code Forces Educational Round 87, which is the Multisect. So, uh, I'll be reading out the problem out without any delay. So, let's start. The first thing to note is that the memory limit is unusual here. It's 28 megabytes, uh, whereas generally it is 256 MB. So, the reason uh, that I think this is because uh, they want to basically, you know, filter out some solutions. Uh, there is something called policy based data structures in C++ and it will it can be used very easily to you know it can be used to implement the solution very easily and to avoid that maybe uh, that's the reason the tight memory limit is there because I actually tried using that method and it gives memory limit exceedingly. So yeah uh, let's just read the problem. We are given a multi set consisting of n integers you have to process two types of queries okay. Uh, add an integer k to the multiset. Find the kth order statistics in the multiset and remove it. Okay, uh, we'll see it using an example. Kth order statistics in the multiset is basically the kth element in the sorted list of all elements of the multisets. Okay, for example, if the multiset contains the numbers these and k equals to three, we have to find the third element in this sorted list, or uh, that is double one, two, double four, five, seven, which is two. So third element is one, two, three, two. If you try to delete an element which occurs multiple times, only one occurrence is removed. Okay, so this is the definition of what we have to do and how we have to do, and not exactly how, just what. Uh, after processing all queries, we have to print any one number that that belongs to the multi set or say that it is empty. Okay, I hope the problem is clear. Uh, let's just have a look at the input type. Uh, the first line will contain n and q and will basically be the number of integers that are already there in the multi set and q will be the number of queries uh, as we can see and the second line consists of n integers uh, a1 to a n where they can be from 1 to n the elements that are present initially in the multi set now for each query uh, we have you know an integer ki where if ki belongs to 1 to n it means that the is query says insert ki into the multi set if ki is less than zero uh, that means that uh, remove the mod kth order statistics from the uh, multi set for this query it is guaranteed that mod of ki is not greater than the size of the multi set if the multi set is empty after all queries just print zero okay we can look at this example in the first case uh, Initially, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the set, and in each query, uh, we are getting a minus 1, which means we want to remove the smallest element in the uh, multi set. So, we will be removing, uh, as we can see, that the value of n equals to the value of q. So, we will be removing one element each time. So, so finally, our multi set is going to be empty. So, we will print 0. Okay. And uh, in this case, uh, just give me a moment. Yeah, and uh, in this case, initially our multi set is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and in the first uh, query, it tells us to remove the fifth element, so remove it, then the first element, then remove it, then the third element, 1, 2, 3, remove it, then again the first element, so we are left with 3, so we can print 3. And uh, for the uh, next test case, initially we have triple 1, 2, 3, 4. Then it tells us to insert 5 to it, then it tells us to insert 6 to it. So we can print any of the numbers between 1 to 6 and in this case it has printed 6. But we are given uh, print any integer that belongs to the resulting uh, multi set. So, so there can be multiple answers. It is also given that 6 is not the only answer in the third example. Okay. So now we will basically be discussing uh, some solution, uh, one of the possible solutions. Okay. So yeah one of the possible solutions that i am going to discuss is using a fenwick tree or you know a uh, a segment tree i'll be using a fenwick tree in this case what i'll be doing is i i'll be simulating the process that they are telling us to do right uh, if i have an insert query i'll somehow insert it uh, into the multi set i just somehow store it you know that this element has been inserted uh, if I have a remove query, I'll try to get the kth smallest element. That's what we want, right? Kth smallest element in the uh, sorted list, basically the kth element in the sorted list, right? 
and I just remove it. And in the final, uh, you know, uh, when while uh, printing the answer, I'll have to get any one element that is present in the array. So one important thing is that all of the numbers that are going to be present in the uh, basically the multi set are going to be between one and n, and we know that. Uh, and can be up to 10 raised to power 6 so the values of the elements we can say will can be from 1 to 10 raised to power 6 right so what I am trying to uh, you know what I am uh, trying to think of is that what we can do is we can make uh, what if we make uh, make an array that represents you know let's say the array's name is f and where f of i represents the frequency of i in current multi set in the current state of multi set okay right if let's say i have this array f of i and uh, now if i have this array f of i what will be my kth smallest element it will be you know the smallest such i value and and its size will be n plus 1 just for the record because uh, the values of the elements can be from 1 to 1, right? I hope this is clear. Uh, we, what we want is we want smallest i, smallest i such that summation of j equals to 1 to i f of j is greater than or equal to k to get the kth smallest element. Uh, I hope this makes sense, does it? Okay, I'll, I'll just try to explain it. <coughs> <coughs> what we are basically trying to do here is when I am saying uh, summation j equals to 1 to i f of j what I mean is I am getting the frequency you know the total frequency of all those elements that are less than or equal to i right because the numbers can be from 1 to i in that case so I am trying to get the smallest such number smallest such i such that the frequency of numbers you know that are less than or equal to i is greater than or equal to k if I get such smallest number, I will be sure that my kth smallest number is going to be that number only. Because if let's say the ith, uh, the, the number that I get, let's say x, if x is the smallest such number such that this uh, value is greater than or equal to k, it means that for x minus 1, this value was less than k, right? If, it's, uh, if it was less than k, it means that I haven't really, you know, covered k numbers while moving from 1 to uh, x minus 1 right and for x plus 1 we know that the value will be obviously greater than or equal to k but it is greater than or equal to k for a x as well it means that I have already covered k numbers while before reaching x plus 1 so x is going to be my uh, answer the smallest such i that says that this value is greater than or equal to k right now the, the next question that comes is how to do this within time limit because one way to do is that maintain a frequency sum or sorry maintain a frequency array uh, for each query I iterate from 1 to you know n and get the smallest such i and uh, after getting smallest such i just do its frequency minus minus right and uh, but in this case for each query uh, we'll be for each you know uh, for each query when we uh, want to remove the kth element we'll be ticking big o of n time right and uh, when we remove, when we want to add some element we'll be just taking big o one time uh, let's say we are we want to add some element k but we'll be doing is we'll be just simply say frequency of k plus plus right so in this case it might it it, it, it should give us daily if we are uh, saying that the value of n and q is 10 to power 6 because in that case uh, the worst time complexity can be big o of n times q i hope the solution approach is clear now the next thing that we want to discuss is how do we implement it within time limit okay now to do that uh, i'll be using fenwick tree fenwick tree basically will give me uh, you know the prefix sum uh, what i was interested is was in smallest i smallest i such that uh, summation of j equals to 1 to i f of j is greater than or equal to k right that's it now uh, if i am able to calculate prefix of j you know uh, prefix of i sorry let's call it prefix of i 
prefix of i is basically uh, the sum of the numbers from uh, sum of the you know uh, numbers at at indices 1 to i what i want is i want prefix sum of i in in some in somewhat less time than it is taking for me uh, than it is taking me to calculate in this way if let's say uh, I, I think if you if you if you're not aware about Fenwick tree you need to read about it more on the internet it will basically give me this value in log of n time I'll be able to get this value in log of n time if I give it some i now if I am able to get prefix of i in log n time what I can basically do is I can binary search over the values to get smallest such i because it is a monotonic function right uh, my prefix sum is going to increase only because the frequencies are going to be greater than or equal to zero then it's for sure as I increase the value of i the prefix sum is going to be increasing so I'll to, to get the smallest such basically uh, you know i value such that the prefix of i is greater than or equal to k I can apply binary search and for getting the value of prefix i I can use fenwick tree right I hope uh, this thing is clear uh, it will be more clear while well, I'll be implementing it for sure. Uh, I'm also going to do it for the first time now. I haven't really solved it before. So yeah, let's get to the coding part of the problem. I'll be just copying this first test case for now. And uh, I actually have the code of BIT saved. Okay, not PS3, BIT. Yeah, this is the code. I just paste it over here okay so yeah the first thing is take the input for number of test cases okay I'm sorry there are no test cases uh, take the input for n and q seeing n q then we'll be having n numbers right okay I'll, I'll just see whether I really require to make an array or not so uh, I'll be making an making a Fenwick tree of size n. So I'll say uh, Fenwick tree. Let's say dit dit dot init n. Right. So I made the dit of size n. Uh, you can see that the init function basically uh, makes the size of the vector tree n plus 1 and assigns zero values to all of the indices. Now one thing to note here is that the time complexity sorry not time complexity the space complexity that we'll be using here is going to be big of n because I'm not going to create anything extra you know uh, I'm not going to use much more space uh, except for this BIT and this BIT just making a vector of size uh, n and which which gives us that the time complexity sorry the space complexity is going to be big of uh, n and if we calculate you know let we know that the size of one integer is four bits sorry four bytes but in this case it's going to be eight bytes because I have actually uh, you know defined int as long long so before actually proceeding to the solution let's see uh, eight is the size of one long long and the maximum size can be a million one two three four five six these many bytes into one zero two four gives me the number of kilobytes into one zero sorry not one zero two four not multiply divided by divided by okay I'll just open calculate uh, so yeah uh, eight 8 into 1 2 3 4 5 6 these many number of bytes divided by 1024 these many number of kilobytes divided by 1024 again these many number of but by it okay anyway I'll just open the calculator here 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 right divided by 1 0 2 4 divided by 1 0 2 4 so the size is going to be so approximately 7.6 MB so which is 
inner time limit oh sorry in which is which is in our space limit okay memory limit so yeah initialized it by uh, n now i'll iterate n times i'll say int x c in x i just need to update the frequency of x by 1 so to do that there is a function uh, update i just update its frequency by 1 i'll say uh, bit dot update x1 right so i'll have some queries now while q minus minus what I have here is uh, two types of queries say int k c in k if k is greater than or equal to 1 it means that we need to insert something uh, now to insert I just have to update its value once again by 1 dit dot update uh, k comma 1 right just update the value by plus 1 else if it's negative I first say k equals to minus k so that it's positive now and in this case i need to remove the kth smallest element there right now i'll be applying my research now my kth smallest element can be from one and the maximum possible value can be n so my beginning of beginning and end of the my research are going to be one and n uh let's say we have one more answer over here now while beginning is less than or equals to n i'll say uh, int mid equals to pick plus n by 2 now I'll check the prefix sum of this mid to do that I'll say int cur thrif current prefix equals to bit dot uh, let me check this is pref yeah of dot pref mid it will give me the prefix sum till mid now if this current pref is greater than or equal to k it means that one possible answer is this mid it is possible that uh, you know uh, this is the smallest such index so i'm just updating the answer by mid for now but i also check if it's possible to get some another index that is less than mid minus uh, that is less than mid such that the sum is uh, you know greater than or equal to k for that also so i just say and equals to mid minus one else if it is not greater than or equal to k it means that the current range is uh, you know the current mid value is a bit smaller i just say search towards the right half but plus one okay so by this thing uh, by the end of this loop i would have had my answer value for sure because they are ensuring that the value of k will be a valid one so i just say uh, bit dot update answer comma minus one because i have to decrease its frequency by one so i'm adding minus one to the index answer got it now after having coming out of the while loop i just need the smallest such you know uh, i just need any such number that is present in the bit so i'll just say initially i'll just initialize my answer by zero let's say nothing is present for now i just iterate from one to n if bit dot pref i is it is basically you know the first index such that the prefix of i is basically greater than or greater than zero so when i get the first such index such that the prefix sum is greater than zero it means that that particular index has a value greater than zero right so i just say answer equals to i and break and then I just print it. let's see I hope this works if it doesn't I'll try to debug it it is compiling now let's run it yeah for this case it should have been 0 let's check for the other 2 as well it should be 3 and for the next one it should be 6 it is 3 in this case it should be 6 in this case as well okay this is yeah 1 is fine because uh, all the numbers from 1 to 6 are present so 1 is also fine by the way it is 1 because we are uh, trying to get the smallest such number okay so yeah I'll just try and submit it uh, in the meantime I'll just go through the code once again 
let's just see if it accept if it is accepted or not if it is then i will go through okay i hope it will be accepted now okay so yeah uh, the first thing that i am doing is taking the input and by taking the input this bid is basically initialized by zero first the frequency of each number from 1 to n is initialized by zero as you can see that the tree value here uh, assigns each value as zero initially now while updating i just update the value of each index that is uh, you know each number that is initially present in the uh, multi set by one because i just need to update uh, you know uh, increase its frequency by one now while uh, Processing the queries, I just input k. If the value of k is greater than or equal to one, it was it was given in the question itself that we need to basically add k to the subset. Sorry, not the subset, the multi set. Uh, to do that, simply increase its frequency by one. Else, uh, k equals to minus k first because the value of k was actually negative. So I just want to use the mod k instead of k. Let me see if it is yeah, it has been accepted. So yeah. Uh, in this case, I'll be bind, applying binary search to find me k smallest element. To do that, uh, we know that the answer is obviously going to lie in the, lie in the range 1 to n because the, it has the multiset has numbers 1 to n only. Uh, I'll initialize my answer by something. Uh, it's not really required, just have, an, have a variable answer. Now, the binary search will run while building is less than or equals to end and the mid value is here. Now, the decision that I need to make here is that whether my answer, whether my kth smallest element is present in the left or in the right, okay. Uh, now to do that, to do that, I'll calculate the prefix sum of mid. What we wanted was such smallest index i such that prefix sum of i is greater than or equal to k, right? Now, if the prefix sum of mid is greater than or equal to k, it means that you know there the, the answer is going to lie in the range uh, one to mid, right? Because uh, prefix sum of mid is greater than or equal to k, it means that there can be some other smaller index as well for which the value is greater than or equal to k. So I'll just say for now, let's say my answer is met, but I'll also see if, you know, I find some other answer from in the range, uh, beginning to mid minus one. So I just say end equals to mid minus one to shift my binary search range to the left half. Okay. If the current prefix sum is greater is, is less than K, uh, then I need to basically shift to the right because I haven't really reached, uh, that particular index till now. Okay. So yeah, after having found the answer, I am sure that I'll be finding I'll be finding uh, some answer because they given they've given in the question that the value of given k will be valid one, and uh, then I'll say update answer comma minus one because I need to remove this uh, kth smallest element. I'll just decrease its frequency by one, so minus one. Okay. Uh, then I want to find the final answer. Any such element in the BIT that is present. Uh, any such element that is present in the multi set to do that i am just iterating from one to n as soon as i find an index for which the prefix sum of i is greater than or oh, sorry greater than zero it means that, that that particular number is present right let's say let's say we had frequencies of one two three four five and the frequencies were like uh, let's say one is not present then it will be zero then let's say 2 is again not present and it will be 0. Let's say 3 is present and its frequency is 2. So we know that 1 is not present, okay, the prefix sum is 0. 2 is not present, okay, prefix sum is 0. As soon as we reach a non-zero frequency for a number, then we can say that the prefix sum is greater than 0, then it will be present. I hope this is clear. Now then I'll say answer equals to i break. Then I'll say the answer. If I do not find any such element whose frequency is greater than zero, then the answer has already been initialized by zero, so it will just print zero. That's what we were required to do in that case. Okay. Yeah. So it has been accepted, and I hope the solution is clear and the code is clear as well. And uh, and while while it working, that's also clear. I think because the space complexity uh, is such that you know I'll be using uh, seven eight MB of space. Okay. So yeah, this was it for this video guys. See you guys in the next series. Thank you.